Chapter 1 To Afghanistan in a flying warehouse. This was payback time for the World Trade Center. We were coming after the guys who did it. If not the actual guys, then their blood brothers, the lunatics who still wished us dead and might try it again. Goodbyes tend to be curt among Navy SEALs. A quick backslap, a friendly bear hug, no one uttering what we're all thinking. Here we go again, guys, going to war, to another trouble spot, another half-assed enemy willing to try their luck against us. They must be out of their minds. It's a SEAL thing, our unspoken invincibility, the silent code of the elite warriors of the U.S. Armed Forces. Big, fast, highly trained guys, armed to the teeth, expert in unarmed combat, so stealthy, no one ever hears us coming. Seals are masters of strategy, professional marksmen with rifles, artists with machine guns, and, if necessary, pretty handy with knives. In general terms, we believe there are very few of the world's problems we could not solve with high explosive or a well-aimed bullet. We operate on sea, air, and land. That's where we got our name, U.S. Navy SEALs. Underwater, on the water, or out of the water. Man, we can do it all. And where we were going, it was likely to be strictly out of the water. Way out of the water. 10,000 feet up some treeless moonscape of a mountain range in one of the loneliest and sometimes most lawless places in the world. Afghanistan. Bye, Marcus. Good luck, Mikey. Take it easy, Matt. See you later, guys. I remember it like it was yesterday. Someone pulling open the door to our barracks room, the light spilling out into the warm, dark night of Bahrain, this strange desert kingdom, which is joined to Saudi Arabia by the two-mile-long King Fahd Causeway. The six of us, dressed in our light combat gear, flat desert khakis with Oakley assault boots, stepped outside into a light, warm breeze. It was March 2005. Not yet hotter than hell, like it is in summer, but still unusually warm for a group of Americans in springtime, even for a Texan like me. Bahrain stands on the 26-degree north line of latitude, that's more than 400 miles to the south of Baghdad, and that's hot. Our particular unit was situated on the south side of the capital city of Manama, way up in the northeast corner of the island. This meant we had to be transported right through the middle of town to the U.S. air base on Maharak Island for all flights to and from Bahrain. We didn't mind this, but we didn't love it either. That little journey, maybe five miles, took us through a city that felt much as we did. The locals didn't love us either. There was a kind of sullen look to them, as if they were sick to death of having the American military around them. In fact, there were districts in Manama known as Black Flag areas, where tradesmen, shopkeepers, and private citizens hung black flags outside their properties to signify Americans are not welcome. I guess it wasn't quite as vicious as Juden Verboten was in Hitler's Germany, but there are undercurrents of hatred all over the Arab world, and we knew there were many sympathizers with the Muslim extremist fanatics of the Taliban and Al-Qaeda. The black flags worked. We stayed well clear of those places. Nonetheless, we had to drive through the city in an unprotected vehicle over another causeway, the Sheikh Hamad, named for the emir. They're big on causeways, and I guess they will build more since there are 32 other much smaller islands forming the low-lying Bahrainian archipelago, right off the Saudi western shore in the Gulf of Iran. Anyway, we drove on through Manama, out to Maharak, where the U.S. air base lies to the south of the main Bahrain International Airport. 